Hi everyone, so for my vlog today, we will be talking about a new brush acquisition of mine and it is actually these brushes from Tanseido which belongs to their Aka series. So this is a limited edition release from Tanseido which is exclusive to FudeBeauty.com. Now, if you want to get this, um, all you have to do is go to Fude Beauty because they're the only ones who are selling this series at the moment now i saw this released when i was in paris i think though so that was around like you know early june and when i saw it i was like very attracted first and foremost to the color of the handles here because they look very very beautiful and they look very elegant so i'm just gonna put a shot here of the brushes under natural light so that we can just see how nicely it actually like you know gleams and glisten under natural light it's so beautiful it's such a beautiful handle design the other thing that i was very attracted to this series is actually these three brushes here because these are the ones that have a much more higher grade of like you know bristles being used uh, mainly this two uses a red squirrel makeup brushes and then this tiny brush this small one actually uses weasel now um before i continue i would like to say that the aka series from Tanseido, which is exclusive at Fuda Beauty, has two collections in it. So you have the premium collection and then you have the regular collection. Now the main difference is that the premium collection uses premium natural bristle fiber, such as Red Squirrel and um, Weasel, while the regular series uses Sokoho Goat Hair and Pony, I believe. So um, I didn't really do some research on that, mainly because I wasn't very interested in the regular series, except for this brush here, which uses Sokoho Goat Hair and is done using tea so that's the main reason why I decided to get it and of course like you know the very uh, different brush head design here but we'll get into details a little bit later like you know specifics and um, close-ups now when I first saw these brushes being presented at foodabeauty.com I was very interested in purchasing them right there and then but I just had to hold my horses because at the time I was still in Paris so I was still vacationing and I knew as soon as I get home uh, I'm gonna be paying off some of my vacation debt so that's why I took my sweet time uh, before I purchased these brushes and I just really had to wait and to see if my desire for them was actually gonna ripen now um, as I've said in previous like you know videos before when I'm talking about brushes is that I'm not really interested in purchasing brushes that are like you know released into the market like you know any brush but I am very specific in the type of brushes that I want to purchase and what like you know really tickled my fancy with a premium um, collection from the Aka series of um, Tanseido is actually the red squirrel um, hairs used in these two brushes because I don't have red squirrel makeup brushes in my collection yet. While this one is just an accessory to the crime because this is made of weasel and I have come to appreciate weasel brush heads. So that's why I was like, you know, very sure that I was going to get this. Now, um, if you've seen my unboxing video, you guys have seen that there were actually two packages there. And um, I actually bought these brushes uh, at two separate occasions. So mainly the first purchase that I did was these three brushes. And the main reason why I decided to do this first is because, um, well, you can actually buy this individually, by the way. Um, you don't have to buy this as a set. But um, the main reason why I decided to purchase these individually is because this eyeshadow brush at that time was already at a limited stock. And I think there were only three left or two left. So like, you know, before I did this video, um, I did check foodabeauty.com and unfortunately this brush is no longer available while these two other brushes are still available and um, after I think two weeks or maybe three weeks I then decided to purchase the cheek brush so I really had to space out my purchases first because um, like you know these again were unplanned and I also had other purchases that I need to do uh, for work so that's why it took me a while to actually um, get these brushes from Tanseido. Now Tanseido is actually one of those foodie brands that I'm not familiar with and I don't know maybe the reason why is because I don't see them being talked about much here on YouTube or on social media or with the people that I follow on social media. Now what placed Tanseido on my radar is actually when I purchased the WC140 brush um, from foodabeauty.com and what attracted me to this brush is the dyeing technique 
used on the brush head here, wherein the Soko Ho Goat hair was dyed using tea. And I found that very special and very, like, you know, intriguing because I never had that kind of a brush in my collection before. And after I have, like, you know, used this and actually gotten to enjoy the brush, that I decided to check out Tenseido every once in a while to see if there are brushes in their collection that will work to my, like, you know, sentiments or even to my buying ability. Now, I do have to say that there are some brushes in the collection of Tenseido that are actually quite pricey that sometimes if I look at them on the website, I'm thinking to myself, oh my god, they're actually um, quite expensive, especially the premium ones. Very, very expensive. And um, speaking of which, there was actually one brush that I saw on their website which i fell in love with um but it was a limited edition release i was like in a release during the year of the rooster celebrations and it was actually a very beautiful brush it had like you know white goat hair and a single piece of a japanese pheasant feather so can you imagine how beautiful that looked and like you know it had this very nice um blue handle and i said to myself if i just saw that when it was released, I would have purchased that brush because it was a very, very beautiful brush. I was like, you know, aesthetically attracted to it. So anyway, but I digress. Let us talk about the Aka series now from Tenseido. And it's a good thing we're doing this video because it's a great way to get to know the brand more. Now, the first brush that we'll be talking about is a WS140 brush. And this is the highlight brush. And it belongs to the regular collection of the Aka series. Now, what made me so attracted to this brush is actually the brush head here because aside from the brush head design the brush head here is made of sokoho goat hair and is dyed using tea so it is the same reason why i actually purchased the wc 14 tea brush so um like you know as i've said before i don't have a lot of these types of brush heads in my collection so it's nice to add a different variety into my collection so now that i am pressing the brush head into my palm here I can feel some resistance in the bristles here and there's really a strength to them and there's also a substantial amount of fullness on the belly here which i think will work well like you know you're actually able to pick up hard pressed like you know highlighters or even like you know blushes with a lot of glitters in them and it is actually a very effective kind of brush to use to buff out color like you know i can really feel the strength of the bristles here so um like, you know in just me saying that and i'm also like you know running the brush here on my cheeks right now um although i don't feel any prickling sensation i can really feel the strength of this brush head here so it's actually perfect for highlighting and it actually dances very nicely on the face but the point that i'm getting to is that if you are someone who has extremely sensitive skin this might not be for you because of the strength of the brush head here i think you guys can see that Hmm, very interesting. So if I'm just like, you know, running my fingers through it, there's a nice snap back into position. The brush head maintains its actual, like, you know, brush head shape. Now, speaking of brush head shape, the Tenseido WS-140 brush actually reminds me of the Hinoki Number no. 2 brush from Sonya G. Although the brush head designs are very similar, they're actually quite different. Where in the Hinoki Number no. 2 brush here from Sonya G is actually rounder than the WS-140 brush here, wherein it's actually more angular, especially when you look at it from the side here. So, which is actually very interesting. And the Hinoki brush here is actually softer and airier in comparison to the Tenseido WS-140 brush, which is very interesting. So the Tenseido WS-140 brush is gonna be a much more resilient and stronger brush than the Hinoki brush from Sonya G. All right. Now let me just put the WC-140 brush right beside the WS-140 brush so that we can just see the difference between two brushes. So of course, the WC-140 brush, the brush head here is lighter in color in comparison to the WS-140, mainly because I've been using the WC-140 for a few years now. And over time, the dye of the brush head actually fade. Because if you take a look at the brush head here of the WS-140 brush, it's actually deeper in comparison to the WC-140. All right, and now let's move on to the premium collection from the Aka series. And I'm gonna start by talking about the MQ10 eyeshadow brush. 
Now the MQ10 brush has a very short handle here, like in comparison to the other brushes from the premium collection of the Akka series. And I could say that it's like almost as short as like, you know, a Chikohodo eyeshadow brush. But I digress. The main reason why I decided to get the MQ10 brush is because the brush head here is made of weasel. Now to me, weasel is one of the most resilient types of hairs that you can use on a makeup brush and you can use it for different types of formula maybe for cream liquid or powders so it can be a very versatile type of hair now let's go back to the brush head here if we take a look at the brush head here especially here on the tips it looks to be a little bit airy to a certain degree because if i was going to compare the mq10 to one of the weasel brushes that i have in my collection which is the s132 from hakuhodo you can see that the hakuhodo brush head here is actually more compact and it's more directional where in the mq10 here again is actually quite airy so i guess this brush will give us some sort of like a buffing ability especially if you use this for eyeshadow or even like you know for concealer application so we will be trying this a little bit later okay all right and the next brush that we have here is the aq14 brush and this is made of pure red krill brush head here and oh my god now that i am running the brush here on the palm of my hands on my fingers or even here on my face i do have to say that this is one of the most softest brushes that i have in my collection so let me try the powder brush here what's the name of this the aq20 brush oh my god so it's actually very very soft it feels very luxurious it feels very silky so in doing this activity alone if you are someone who has extremely sensitive skin or if you're someone who's undergoing skin treatment for example if you have like you know a lot of pimples and your medication is actually making you peel and if you don't want to use makeup brushes that exacerbates that peeling these brushes are gonna be great for you to use this is going to be very effective because these are the softest brushes that I have ever tried in my life, ever. Very soft and very silky. Okay, so let's go back and talk about this brush here. Now, the AQ14 here is actually described to be a large eyeshadow brush. Now, if you want to use this to apply a one and done eyeshadow all over your eyelids, this would be a good idea. But to me, I actually like to use this in the under eye area, like, you know, to set concealers, things like that especially when i am using like you know powder foundations because i would really like to use a brush that will not pick up a ton of pigment especially when i'm using powder foundations for retouching so i believe this will be a very nice brush to use for that mm. okay so we'll be trying this out later because after all i'm going to be demoing these brushes one by one okay and the last brush that we'll be talking about is the aq20 brush and this is the cheek brush so as i've shown you guys earlier this actually feels very soft and very silky on the palm of my hands now despite the softness of the bristles here there's a nice snap back into position with this brush head there's also a very nice bounce to it now if i'm just like you know pouncing the brush here at the palm of my hand you can see there's not much resilience here so this brush will not have a buffing ability like let's say a goat hair brush because it's just way too soft as you guys can see here there's minimal strength in the belly here but i just like the way that it like you know splays out quite nicely when we're like you know just really touching it here at the palm of my hands and the brush head here has a very nice like you know flat and rounded brush head design but to me it's like a paddle brush i have to say now again, the brush head is actually very soft, not much resistance, I couldn't feel any at all. Glides very smoothly and nicely on the face and it feels very luxurious. <laughs> very luxurious, like you know, I can't stop running the brush here on my face. Now, before we continue into the demo, um, one thing I have to say though is that if you are someone who has oily skin, um, Skrill brush heads may not be an option for you because they tend to absorb the natural oils of your skin like you know um, quite excessively and as you guys can see here the bristles is already very shiny because it picked up a lot of my natural oils and also of the sunscreen that I left 
on my face so not unless we are someone who has oily skin but also extremely sensitive um, then by all means get this but other than that a goat brush will be a good option for you but if you're someone like me who loves using these types of luxurious brushes just make sure that you clean them out every so often just so that you don't have any bacterial buildup on the brush heads all right and with that being said because of their soft and fragile nature you have to be very careful on how you store these brushes because these are the softest brushes that I have ever felt ever in my life so if you will store this at a bad angle it's gonna get deformed and the only way for you to return to this original shape and form of the makeup brush is you actually have to wet it and you have to air dry them now also one other thing before we continue you can actually buy these brushes individually like you know even if it is part of the Aka set or if it's part of the permanent collection of Tanseido. So the only difference is that the Aka series, you have this graduated handle, but in the permanent collection, you can choose either you have the red, the blue, or the black handle, okay? And also one other thing in terms of price, I do have to say that the AQ20 here retails for 22,000 yen. So that is actually quite pricey for a brush head that doesn't have a lot of volume and like you know in comparison this is my chikohodo mksk brush although this is made of gray squirrel but as you guys can see you have a lot of volume here on this brush head and this actually retails for twenty thousand yen only so can you see the difference in the volume and in the length and of the prices between these two brushes so in that being said i have to say that red squirrel makeup brushes are premium in the food industry okay so at this point what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna slap on some foundation and then i'm going to come back and let's continue using these brushes one by one Alright, so I have some foundation down and I'm just really like, you know, buffing it in into my skin. Now, I do have to say though, is that I do apologize if the lighting is changing. Um, like, you know, it's again, very cloudy here. And I also have some artificial light on. So hopefully that will really help in trying to maintain like a nice overall lighting for us today. Okay, so my foundation is down and I would like to continue and add some concealer. So I'm going to be using my NARS radiant creamy concealer and i'm going to be using my mq10 brush and i have picked up a minimum amount of the product here on the brush head and i'm just applying it here in my under eye area and i do have to say though that i am not feeling any type of a prickling sensation at all and it's actually applying the product quite nicely in my under eye area very even no streaky and also applied cover good coverage in no time amazing right okay so let me apply the same amount here in my other under eye area look at that the brush really helps to apply the product very well again no prickling sensation at all like you know even if i'm bringing it here to my lower lash line area spreading it out good coverage i have to say even in a patting motion because that's great having like you know these types of like you know flat and round like you know paddle type of brush head design you can also use them in a patting motion okay so that's the concealer down amazing i love that maybe let me just apply a little bit here on the bridge of my nose all right, so now I'm going to set my under eye first and I'm going to be using the AQ14 brush. I hope I get the names right. I'm so bad with names, especially when numbers are involved. My dyslexia um, comes out. <laughs> okay, so let me just get some of this Prism Libre powder from Givenchy. This is in number three, Voile Rose. So this is a rosy tone powder and I'm just going to apply it here in my under eye area just to help brighten it up. Ah, oh, look at that. 
This brush head is so amazing. It feels very soft and it actually picks up quite a good amount of powder. And it's also able to spread it quite nicely, I have to say. So very surprised with it because after all, there's not much strength in the belly of this, but it's actually able to lay the powder quite nicely. So again, if you're someone who has like, you know, very sensitive under eye area, this brush is going to be a great brush for you to use. Okay, so let me apply more of the powder in this portion just so that it will help to open up this part of my face. Okay, so I'm going to set my face with powder and I'm going to be using this Givenchy Prism Libre and I think this is in number 5, so it's a little bit deeper. And the main reason why I'm using a deeper shade of powder right now is because I have some tan on and my foundation is not matching my skin, so I just need to use a powder that can just bring some depth into my skin tone. And I'm going to be using my Chikohodo MKSK brush for that. Just so that we don't have like, you know, a very precise application of powder, but just diffused enough to bring some depth into my skin. Because after all, this is a squirrel powder brush, a gray squirrel powder brush. So this will not pick up a ton of color from the powder. And this will just add a very nice light dusting of color and powder into my face okay so that's my powder down and ah i see a disrespectful blemish here so let me just cover that up so let me come right back okay so i just got my laura mercier secret camouflage in se4 and let me just cover that blemish a little bit i got that from my ingone here from my beard last week, I believe. Okay, perfect. And let me get a large eyeshadow brush and let me just pat some powder to set the camouflage. Perfect, very nice. Okay, so let's continue. So now I'm gonna use the AQ20 brush and I am going to use a very intense color blush for us today. Example, this Exhibit A Powder Blush from NARS and I'm just going to press the brush head here onto the pan and I'm not really entirely sure if it was able to pick up some color but we'll see what type of color application this will apply on my cheeks. Okay, so as you guys can see, that's how light this brush will apply very intense color looking blushes on your cheeks. So mind you, it's that bright, right? So if you are someone who likes to approach your like you know blush application like you know in a very soft manner and also you want to build it into a nice intensity that you're comfortable with, this brush is going to help you do that. Okay, so it's giving my skin this very nice flush of color now very light very very light oh i love this so can you imagine like for example if i have let's say the s110 brush from hakuhodo so the reason why i picked this up is because the brush heads here are almost the same they're flat and round but as you guys can see just by doing this you have more fullness in the belly here of the s110 so this will pick up more pigment so let me just press it also slightly here and apply it onto my cheeks. So as you guys can see, it has a much more stronger pop of color in one application. And you can see the red tones of the blush coming out in comparison to this blush here. It's very soft. This one is actually very strong. Alright, so next what we're going to do is we're going to add some highlight into the face and I'm going to be using the WS-14 brush. And when I first saw this on foodabeauty.com, I said I think that would be perfect because I think it would fit nicely into pans like this and truthfully, it does. So as you guys can see, the shape 
just fits perfectly into the pan and it enables you to pick up a good amount of product. Well, I think we've picked up a lot of products, so let me just buff out a bit of that here at the palm of my hand. And let me just apply this here on my cheekbones. Look at that. Nice application of color, nice blending as well. And then if I want to add like you know a precision type of highlight into my brow bone, I can always add like you know product at the tip of the bristles here at this angle. Tapping just a little bit and then let lightly brushing it here on my brow bone area and also here. Hmm. Now I also think that we can use this if you want to add like you know very slight like you know contouring into the cheekbones. So let's try that. So let me just press it here on the lightest shade and let me just lightly brush it along my cheekbones and also here. Okay, so that's a lightest shade down and now I'm going to go and pick up a little bit of the mid-tone contour color here and I'm just going to lightly apply that into the cheekbones here and I can see it's already adding a very precise amount of contouring on the cheekbones. So if you're someone who likes to have this kind of a contouring application on your cheeks, this brush can also do that for you. So not only can you use this for highlight, but you can also use this for contouring. Look at that. The color already came out. Okay, so let me just change the angle here. I'm using the tips now again. And then trying to see if I could... Yeah, it can really help you to be precise with your contouring application. More detailed. But I think it's going to take you some time to build up the intensity of the contouring because the bristles here are just way too airy and way too soft. But at least, like, you know, it's actually giving you a very nice, soft and diffuse contouring on the skin. Mm, I love that. And using the tips of this brush, I'm just adding some shading into the nose here. Yeah, so we're just like, you know, playing around with the brush. Fantastic. And maybe here. Okay, it's just like, you know, way too big. But it's actually able to apply a very diffused color, but it's not going to be precise, but at least it's able to apply some shadow there. Hmm. That's amazing. That's great. And lastly, I'm going to be applying some of this, like, you know, cream eyeshadow using the MQ10 brush. Okay, so I'm picking up some of the product that I applied here at the back of my hand with the MQ10 brush. And I'm just going to lightly apply it and spread it all over my eyelid. Wow. It actually enables me to apply this product very nicely, also very evenly, and also very minimal, like, you know, um, action needed. Look at that. One and done eyeshadow. Very easy, very fast. And I love that there's a certain type of airiness here at the tips of the bristles because at least you can actually like you know mount this brush at that angle into like your socket line and you can actually like you know just really press it lightly to blend out the product so you can add some intensity as needed and again no prickling sensation at all it feels very very soft it feels very comfortable and it's actually enable you to apply and blend out color in no time. Look at that. Very pretty. Amazing. I'm actually quite surprised by it. Okay, so now that I've tried the MQ10 with a cream eyeshadow, let's try this with powder eyeshadow. So I'm just going to buff out whatever product is left on the brush head here on a microfiber towel. And let me pick up this nice shimmery orange shade here. This is from Viseart. I forgot from which collection this comes from and I can see that it actually picked up a good amount of pigment and I'm going to lightly tap it here 
on my eyelid. Oh, look at that. It's actually able to apply a very nice and very strong amount of pigmentation all over the eyelid. So that's actually what's great about like, you know, having weasel haired makeup brushes it is that it will actually help you to apply colors nicely and intensely and especially if you have like you know eyeshadow products that have a lot of glitters in them and because they have more binders like you know it needs more um hold so a brush like this wherein it's actually very like you know strong and resilient can really help you to pick up these types of colors and also to blend it out at the same time. Mm, look at that. Let me try to apply a little bit of that here in my lower waterline. Okay, I'm not being precise with it, I'm just playing around with it. Very nice. I like that. Mm, and let me pick up a brownie shade. So which one do you think I should go for? maybe this color here and let me see if this will apply oh yes look at that so i am now laying the tips of the bristles of the mq10 here on my socket line and it actually enabled me to apply the pigment quite nicely and blend it out also at the same time fantastic very soft amount of color and it's also actually able to buff out the pigments quite nicely fantastic all right so i believe this is my vlog for today i hope that you guys enjoyed me showing you how i am going to be using the aka series brushes from tansiedo so if you have any more questions about this please leave them down in the comments box and then let's have a conversation about it all right and if you do happen to have the Aka series from Sanchedo. Please let me know what did you get and what you like to use them for and maybe I can learn something from you as well. All right, and if you want to purchase this, please proceed to foodabeauty.com. I have links down on the description box so you can go and check them out. All right, so I'm going to let you guys go now. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for being here. I hope that you're having a good day wherever you are. Bye.